Hello, good evening, and welcome to this special show from the LFC Day Trippers. I am Gav, and beside me, as you can see, is Joe Blot, the chair of Spirit of Shankly. We done a show about 10 days ago um, called The Forum, and when we done it, we had a discussion, a frank and honest discussion about the spirit of Shankly, um, how they started, what they do, what they're looking to do with regards to the club and FSG in particular. Two people on the show were really our, our, our members, myself and Andy included, our members of Spirit of Shankly um, and became members quite recently. And P and Phil aren't members of Spirit of Shankly and had some questions. We all questioned each other. We all had a a bit of a row and then we moved on to the next subject but we got contacted by Spirit of Shankly who said really liked the piece really balanced really liked it so we've asked Joe to come on here this evening and I promise you that we haven't timed this to be like this but literally an hour before we're meant to record this show and um, the statement comes from Spirit of Shankly to say that they've met the club and they've they, look they've got some sort of result out of the club that's the only way I could put it Joe Welcome, first of all, um, and thanks to for taking the time because I know, well, I'm nearly sure it has been a very, very busy day on um, for you anyway. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Gavin. Uh, hello to everyone. Um, I think the introduction was great. Uh, certainly, we, we, we did listen with interest to the debate last week and, you know, it, it was the right debate to have. Um, I'm more than happy to contribute to that. Um, it was balanced, and I think I think it's important that people understand, you know, what we do. And it has been a bit of a mad day, um, but actually started off even better. I'm not sure if it got better towards the end of the day with the announcements, or actually started better because one thing we did this morning was 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 open up the food pantry um, mm -hmm. in in Liverpool Eight, which is fully funded by Spirits of Shankly's uh, members' funds. Um, so that was a great start to the day. And then obviously when we when we got the the uh, the green lights that we were good to go then uh, yeah it's been a been a great day all round really for the union and uh, and and the Liverpool members yeah and of course look we spoke about this ten days ago with regards to not only Spirit of Shankly you know I'm not taking the club to task but wanting some sort of say and wanting an open communication and an open forum with regards to how the club is run but when you see things like the field banks and stuff like that there's so much more to Spirit of Shankly than people might think. You know, they, they might just think it's a group of people that want to know what's going on all the time. But there's so much work that goes on in the background as well. And, um, you know, if people go to the Spirit of Shankly site and look it up, you will see, you know, exactly what they do. But, Joe, I have I have this statement here in front of me. I got, I got up by email because I am a member of Spirit of Shankly. And, and I can speak personally, and I know Andy did last week. The reasons for joining Spirit of Shankly, I've always followed with interest. But I would what I would say is that, the whole European Super League thing was the one that kind of tipped me over the edge where I went, hold on, I have to get more involved here. Or I have to at least have a chance to have a say because I, I, I'll be honest with you, I could see where the club are going with it, but the way they done it for me was, was wrong. You know, to consult nobody, um, even including fairly high-membered staff members, you know, highly ranked staff members, if you believe everything you read, and just go with this as just pure ownership and decide that this was the way to go. I thought that was wrong. And that's what made me look into the spirit of Shankly and, and stuff like that and saying to myself, well, hold on, if I want to say, let, where do I go and have a say? Because I, I really think that was wrong in what they've done. For people that are watching and are pro and will be watching this when it goes out, spirit of Shankly, where did they start? What was it about? And what, where are you right now? Well, you know, well, with that statement, we know where you are today, but where are you right now with regards to the club and what you want to do in the future? Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's helpful to go back to the beginning, actually, um, and, and work our way through the years because, you know, 13 years ago when Spirit of Shankly was set up, and I, like you, uh, I, I wasn't one of the, 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 the first people to, to be on it. Um, I joined fairly soon after it started, but I, I certainly wasn't one of the uh, the individuals who, who set it up and, you know, fair play to them for, for doing that at the time. You know, that was there were some dark moments then, weren't there, in terms of Hickson yeah. and, and everything else. And I'm being honest. Look, they, they they set up with a, with a prime a prime aim at the time was to was to was to get rid of Hicks and Gillette. Um, but if you look carefully, what they also set up, they had short term, medium, and long term aims. And one of the long term aims, uh, incredibly, uh, with foresight, was to have access to the board of Liverpool FC. Um, and that's what we got today. Um, so you know, 13 years ago, the the, you know, the people who set out on that road really made some fantastic foundations um, allowing that to happen. 
And I think, you know, touching on your point about the European Super League, I think you're right. You know, we think th- th- there's an element of, and I, I totally understand this, that if there's a train leaving a station that is a European Super League, you want Liverpool to be on it because you want Liverpool to be in the best competitions in the world. Um, and they should be, they rightly should be. I think two things that were wrong with it, well, three things, were obviously the finance, but you know, that's, that's obvious. Um but the other two things that were wrong with it, I think which struck a chord with, with us as a union, um, with the Football Supports Association, with 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 um, Football Supporters Europe, and I think a lot of people, was that it actually stopped sporting merit. So there was no promotion and relegation. You were selected on, on your history. You weren't selected because you were the best. I mean, I, I, I know how proud I was. I'm sure you were. I'm sure many listeners and watchers were. How proud were, were we when we won everything? Two seasons yeah. ago, and yeah. we won it because we were the best on the on the on the planet. We didn't win it because we were the richest, or or just because we had some history. Um, so that, you know that, that that that's really what what strikes. And sec- the, the second really one was that this was done without any fan engagement whatsoever. Um, and the reality is that we'd spoken to the club uh, a few months before because there's always been musings about the changes to UEFA's game anyway. And and then you know alongside that we're, we're were mutterings about what could happen. That we'd had that, you know, big six, um, the Premier League club sort of, you know, starting to to make waves uh, in in our country, and we we spoke to the club. We'd, we'd expressed our concerns um, about it happening. Um, they they took those concerns, but then nothing happened, and then just complete radio silence until that Sunday. So I think it was that those three things really that that really set something different up that. Um, not only were we in, in, in uproar, um, the whole football world was in uproar. Um, so I think on this occasion we, we were we were following the, the, the right of, of it, but at the same time I do understand that if there's if there's something that's bigger, better, makes us makes us bigger and better, and can attract more players, then you know we want to be part of it. But it has to be has to be done for the right reasons. Yeah, I, I fully agree because I, I'm being honest. We we were doing a show. We do a show every Sunday night. And there was murmurings of this, and literally, well, I, I think as we were live or as we were about to finish the broadcast, this came out officially, you know, that this was happening. I literally stopped the broadcast, had a cup of tea, and went, I need to go back on here. I need to go back on here and find out what's going on. And we ended up doing a second show that night. Um, and, and for me, as I said personally, and, and the metaphor you use is correct. If a train is leaving a station, you want to be on it, especially if it's going to a, a bigger and better place, you know. But like you said, the way I looked at it was that the promotion relegation thing was was something that I thought, or lack of, was something that I thought, like you said, you're not earning anything. And then what, ha- what happens is you're in the Premier League, okay, which we never were attempting to leave, but you're in the Premier League and you know it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the season, Sorry. you're going off to get 300 million quid to play Barca, Real Madrid, whoever it might be, over the course of next season. So you could end up, you know, it may not happen, but you could end up literally where the, the six people the clubs that were going in could finish one to six. So seven, eight, nine, and ten in the Premier League would go into the Champions League. Okay, so that makes you not want to watch the Premier League and you're definitely not watching the Champions League. So that, that's where it came from me. And look, we have a crew in Dublin and, and further afield that, that do this podcast. And I would say the majority of nearly every game at Anfield, we would have somebody at it. Okay, and, and at times groups of us would be over. And the bread and butter is going to the league. And going to a league game that, that matters and counts and there's a bit of needle and there's a bit of, you know, the away fans are up for it. But, you know, for me, going to a league game where I know, regardless of what happens here, I'm going to be looking for flights to Barcelona in August because we just qualify. It just didn't sit right with me. It didn't sit right with me personally and it didn't sit right, I think, with a lot of people. We how it would have went on and I suppose affected both league football and European football under the away foot umbrella if this had happened. Having said that, if they go the right way about it, you know the club has to progress, and that's there's no issue there. But I don't, I don't know how you do that by literally, possibly three to four men at the very top deciding to keep it from everybody else and deciding to go with it. You know that's not that's not how their owners. But I don't think that's how football clubs should work, especially the one to the magnitude of Liverpool and the support you have, not only in Liverpool or LA or wherever it might be, all over the world. You know everyone supports his club and. 
travel to Premier League games, European Cup games, wherever it might be, you can't just turn around and say, listen, we're, we're more or less taking that away from you, even though those games will still be there, you really are taking that away from them, in my opinion. But moving on to, the, the I, I just want to go through the statement um, that came out today from yourselves with regards to talks you've had. The talks were done in two to three stages, I think, over the last couple of weeks, is that right? Yeah. So, so basically it starts with... Um, Spirit of Shanti met with representatives of Liverpool FC's board on Tuesday the 18th of May 2021 to continue talks on the union's four requests. We can now report the outcome to be ratified by members of course. So the first one is, the support board is to be established and written into the club's regulations making it legally a binding agreement. SOS will be head of this board. Can you tell me about what the board is because a, support of, a supporters board is a brilliant idea, SOS will be the head of it. Does that mean that other fan, you know, other fan clubs or support bases from wherever will be invited onto this board. Is that how that's going to work? Because I'm going to be honest, Joe, I've read a lot into Spirit of Shankly, but a lot of people would feel that, well, Spirit of Shankly are just going for this and it'll be Spirit of Shankly and unless you're with Spirit of Shankly, nothing else will happen for you. I read that a little bit differently today. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I, I understand why people would think it. Um, and listen, but. With, with, as, as, as we started out, you know, we're 13 years in the making. We're, we're, a, we're a very mature organisation, believe it or not. We've got, you know, uh, recognition that we, we we can't speak for every single Liverpool supporter. And, and I certainly haven't got a voice for every single um, group of supporters that with um, the Liverpool Disabled Supporters Association. We've got... Affiliation with um, with Cop Outs, the LGBT group, uh, with the official Liverpool Supporters Club, with the women's game, um, with Spy on Cop 1906. So we, we, we try and embrace the things that we can't actually cover. We try and embrace them. Um, yeah. That's where we can, we can actually make a real difference and have them not just as affiliates, but true partners. Um, so the idea would be, um, I, I guess, to unpick what 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 the statement says, uh, and I get, you know, I totally get as well. It's very hard to sort of get the nuances of all of this. Um, but what will happen now is that engagement is now in the articles of association of the football club, or will be, um, <laughs> and through through spirit, well, through the supporters' trust, which is the spirit of Shankly, and I'll come on to on, onto that in a bit. Um, the supporters' board will be will be operated. Now that's a, that's a distinct difference to when it could, the way it currently operates because supporter engagement is actually run by the club uh, of which we participate and which other groups participate, um, which is fantastic. What this is actually takes it to, to the other extreme, whereas supporter groups will be leading supporter engagement, so we'd be going to the club. And to do that, we have to have the right structure. So to do that, we need the spirit of Shankly representation, not just because we're spirit of Shankly and because we think we're ace or whatever. It's not mm -hmm. that. This is about the supporters' trust. And that's the legally binding bit. Because if spirit of Shankly should you know, fall apart next week as a consequence of all of this, a supporters' trust needs to be in place. And that will take the lead. And that's that's the important facet. So we've got we've got within the Articles of Association, you know, a future proofing. Um, so in terms of spirit of Shankly leading it, yes, we will, as a consequence of us being the the, nom the, the actual recognised supporters trust. But within that, we will absolutely be looking through democratically to to elect individuals who represent um, groups that we don't think that we currently currently represent adequately, um, and the club reflects that as well. Um, so we'll be looking to have the right number of. Um, groups on the board who can have a strong voice but then equally to have the right representation on that board as well um and just to just then also to clarify but i think just to go back to the point is that in terms of fans and supporters taking taking responsibility for engagements what it means is we can take stuff to the club which we've not been able to do before so so let's just use an example where we don't think that um people with a disability um either accessing tickets or accessing the ground or participating in the developments of the new Anfield Road stand. We don't think that they're getting um, a, a good deal. We kind of only get that when the club comes to us or, the, or there's individual complaints. 
what we can do in the future is if we can we can set out an annual plan for example that says that these are the these are the 10 major disability issues that are being that need to be addressed in the, in the next in the next 12 months we can then set targets we can set time get time scales we, we can set time aside to work with them but actually we're holding the club to account to do it in a positive way so it's not just holding the club to account when when, when there's a negative so it actually puts a formal structure in place that you know a stands the test of time b isn't just mm. spirit of shine clear it's actually it's actually the supporters trust and c is democratic elected and d actually to actually takes the responsibility for engagement where it should be which is grassroots supporters okay so with that supporters board how many how many places are on this board that that, that are being spoken of yeah it has to be determined because we need we need to identify the gaps as well properly uh, and work with the club on that so you know the, what what we've what we've got today are, are all the agreements in principle subject to our members signing that off uh, next week but you know once the agreements in principle are, are agreed yeah, yeah you know the day job starts again in terms of then determining that um, and you know if if there are four gaps um, then maybe to maybe to a committee of nine if there are seven gaps then maybe it's a committee of 13 you know i think that's what we've got to, that, that's the detail we've got to iron out um but you know listen but we're, we're, we are more than happy to work with and we have already been working with certainly the ldsa cop outs at 1906 the olsc but we know there's other groups out there as well and we're, we're happy to engage with them and if they follow the same democratic governance processes that we do you know there will be terms of reference there will be code of conduct etc etc you know that then then the the greater voice that we have that spreads the voice is, is really important it's this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and i think we've seized it as it currently is and we won't let it go now hmm. so i've read a lot of this from in with the viewpoint i suppose of being a member of spirit of shanky okay so anybody watching this what i'm taking from what you're saying is that Yes, Spirit of Shankly have gone forward to look for recognition from the club, but we're getting this in, you know, we're getting this over the line. It opens up not only Spirit of Shankly to go to the club, but it opens up an official way for other club, other fans from wherever it might be or whatever organisation it might be, once they're following, you know, call to conduct and, and, and other things that you said there, to become a part of this and a part of committees and a part of this board, I suppose. Um, that, that can embrace the club not uh, like you said not in just a way of we're taking you to task over furlough or we're taking you to task over ticketing or we're taking you the task over whatever it might be it's, it's it's constructive from the beginning it's not just reactive is that is that am i right in saying that yeah yeah it is it, it's exactly that i mean you know i mean you know take it take it back four and a bit weeks um we had good we had good relationships with the club anyway through 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 ourselves and through the fan forums so the, the, the system wasn't broken until they broke it with the, mm. the, the European Super League. Um, so, so we, ha you know, we we had good relations to build on, and hence I think that's why it was important for us to have these negotiations over the past four weeks. Uh, unlike United or Arsenal, who mm. who were in you know significantly difficult positions with their um, with their clubs, you know, and I think I think what we've been able to see is that. One, one ask that we made at Liverpool, which obviously wasn't a, a kind of formal ask, was that they should take some leadership here um, and actually demonstrate that if they want to be the best football club in the world, will demonstrate how they can be the best supporter club in the world as well and have the best engagement. Because it, the best isn't just about being on the football pitch, the best is about everything. So they, to be fair, they've taken it on board. And I think we've got an arrangement here that takes fan engagement beyond any anything that that has been around at the moment and i genuinely think that when the when the government's fan-led review you know gets around to talking to us there will be you know almost a, a liverpool template that will come out um because it takes away the the burden of being a board member because the fear that we had about being a board member per se was that you always have to act in the best interests of the company um yeah and, and, guil and guilty by association exactly think, yeah. exactly yeah yeah you know uh, and, and would that individual being welcome in the in the pub outside anfield on a, on a saturday after <laughs> just own, sold sally you know no is the reality that would have been a burden that we would, would have been very difficult what we've got here is is the opposite we've actually got stronger influence um but greater independence yeah, so you're not, you're not. So what you're saying is, <clears throat> you're not, you're not, you're not being asked to tow a company line. 
but no. you're having an influence within the company to you know decide what that line is i suppose that's probably the best way to put it exactly and and, and don't forget it's, because it's in the articles of association it's actually a legal duty upon them to do it yeah uh, I'm going to read the next bit because I think this is huge and, and this is the one that popped out on me straight away. There will be a formal recognition agreement between SOS, Spirit of Shankly, and Liverpool Football Club. This will become part of the club's constitution so that if or when the ownership changes, this contract will remain in place. That is huge to me when I read it. And the only reason it's huge to me when I read it is because I'm thinking of Spirit of Shankly and I'm thinking of uh, Hicks and Gillette. And if anything ever happened where, God forbid, FSG decide to sell the club and move on and we end up with people that promise a lot and deliver very little and they won't be in a position to remove SOS or any member of this of this um, supporters board from wherever they are in the world because this will be written into the constitution again of the club. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. I think that's what we were after really. You know, once we, we discussed and debated the, the actual board, uh, representation we thought there was a better way of doing it uh, which we which, which we worked with the club on we've got that that it secures uh, I think I talked about future proofing uh, mm -hmm. it does do that um, now you know okay if I put me Scouse cynical hat on um, you know any undertaking that's 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 picked up by a new ownership um, is only as good as as long as they honor it um, reality is though that if you didn't have that at all, they wouldn't have anything to start at. Mm. Um, what we've got now is that they've got they've got to deliberately rip it up um, with, with like a seventy percent majority or something. So, what we're in a position of, we we we'd know early on uh, what what the kind of outfit they were. Um, but I think it also future proofs in another way as well because don't forget the fan led review that the governments are introducing um, is going to have um, an improved fit and, fit and proper person test for, for club ownership. Um, and secondly, there's going to be um, the, the hopefully independent governance of those as well. So I think we've got I think we've got the best of both worlds because we're pushing upwards in terms of making sure uh, that we have the best fit, and governments will be pushing downwards. So whoever comes to take control of Liverpool Football Club beyond FSG um, will be bound by government legislation, but also bound by by the Articles of Association. So I think we've we've put a, a major squeeze on new owners really. Yeah, no, and you know what? It, it, the fu the word future proven is is a very way, a very good way of putting it because the way I look at it is, you know, people have their their gripes with FSG. People like them. Some people are in the middle. You know, they split. They don't split a fan base, but there's a there's a varied, uh, you know, opinion on them. Where sometimes you know, you see some owners and they're loved or they're, they're absolutely hated. I'm not going to name any of them. We know who they are, right? But I think. The future proven is important because as good or bad or indifferent as you think FSG are, they are putting something in place here to say, look, if we ever do move on, we are putting something in place here that will protect supporters, supporters unions, you know, the supporters board, whatever it might be. So, you know, you have to look at it in that way and say, well, fair play, because, you know, businessmen can easily rip up things and go, do you know what, I've had enough. I'm selling to the highest bidder. I don't care who he is and you deal with it because I'm getting my money and I'm out of here. You know, so yeah. I think I think it's it's a good it's a very good thing for for the supporters to look at, but I think it's a, it's it's a good thing for FSG to do. You know, that's one thing that you know that might be a hard selling point when you're selling the club. You know, <laughs> by the way, the club is costing you three billion, but those supporters over there have absolutely you know cast iron rights to what they're doing, and they can't be changed. That could be a hard sell. You know, yeah. it's like it's like trying to sell a house when it's six foot under water. You know. It's, it's it's hard, um. But look, yeah. that's I want. I was really interested in that bit. It says here though, and you've mentioned the government's fan led review. SOS and FSG will collaborate to work with the government's fan led review to improve the future of the game. Does that go back to the hmm. European Super League to kind of protect against that, or do you think it's something where? Because I, I think the European Super League will come up again at some stage, but it, it's to, I suppose, improve the mechanism or the logistics of how that may, may come around again rather than it just being dropped on the football wall on a Sunday night. I think so, yeah. I mean, I think, I think, yeah, you know, I, I, I mean, as part of, as part of the statement uh, that'll be coming out um, in due course, you know, FSG will, will not be going to, to, an, to into another uh, football league. Um, that's what they're going to say. 
Um, now, FSG, as we've just been saying, might sell on to someone else who might well think actually taking us into another a, a Super League is the right way to do it. So working collaboratively, collaboratively now um, to stop that kind of challenge in future is really important. So so using using and working with the owners at this moment in time, whilst, they're, whilst, they're, whilst they want to be um, leaders, they want to be trailblazers, they want to be groundbreaking, um, it's an important time to do that. Um, so we want to go to uh, the government-led review um, with in partnership, really, with them, uh, because I think that's a stronger voice. Because what you don't want to do is is it is it is for them just to speak the voice of the Premier League, for example, um, or for any other club, because we're talking about other clubs in this particular review, obviously. Um, you know, for any other club, just to follow the the, the EFL or to follow the um, the Championship model or whatever else it would be. We we want us to have a Liverpool voice, not a Liverpool Premier League voice. Um, and we've got that. That's what they've agreed to do. Now, I'm sure there'll be some things that we can't necessarily agree on because, you know, that, that may be the way. But at least we're going to the table um, with agreements on, on, on a, a number of issues. Um, and as I say, I think this model of fan engagement uh, that, that, that we have um, could be used as, as, a, as, a, as a template uh, for other football clubs to follow. And um, when you think further down the pyramid as well, I mean, I think, Sometimes I've been pinching myself today thinking this, you know, that written into the Liverpool Football Club, as you just said, you know, is it £3 billion? Uh, More or less, yeah. Yeah, you know, value-based club. Um, we've got in, written into the Articles Association that they must engage with the fans before they're making any significant changes. Imagine what that must be for York City or for, for Cardiff City or for Tramia Rovers. Um, or Berry. Or, well, it would have saved Barry. Yeah, you know that that's the point, and I think that's that's what we're trying to do here is 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 that that once in a lifetime opportunity is actually to change football. And what we said to Liverpool was, you can do it. And I think we've got, you know, if Liverpool can do it, I think that's the point, isn't it? That if 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 they can, then there's no reason why Betty couldn't have done it. Yeah, it's, and you know something like it, it absolutely is that because. I know as a, as a as a you know not a regular match going fan but a match going fan sporadically over the season as as seasons go um season on season that you know the one thing I've noticed is the fan experience you know it's a huge thing for people that travel to Liverpool the fan experience around going to watch Liverpool whether that be Anfield itself the surrounding areas and and that all comes from you know, mediation with with locals, mediation with local businesses, supporters, supporters groups. You like you mentioned, spying cop. You know, that's all part of it. And um, and if you can get it right, it's actually, it, it's actually, it makes everyone's life a lot easier, doesn't it? Because, you know, there's nothing worse than people pushing against each other over what can sometimes be trivial things. You know, where and it, they turn from trivial into bigger things because there's just not that avenue there. That that's my feeling on it. When there's not that avenue of communication, there trivial things can just become way bigger than they should be. And I, I suppose when I, when I look at what's going on now, and, and I have to give credit to FSG. You know, I've been I've been critical of them at times. I've been supportive of them at times. But to read this today, just reading it off the page, it, it comes across to me that they've been quite open and honest, and I suppose willing to give. Willing to, you know, not just willing to give a little bit and take more back. They're, they're willing to meet, I don't know if halfway is the right way, but they're willing to meet you at some sort of point where you can say, yeah, this can work. And small things can remain small and bigger things can be worked on. That's just the way I, the way I see it. Am I, am I, have I got my head in the clouds thinking like that? Or do you think that's probably what you're looking at? No, I keep thinking that myself. You know, as I said, I've just been saying we've been pinching myself about certain things. No, I mean, look, they, they, they came to the table with 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 a, with a clear mind and a clear view that they wanted to put right what they what they did wrong, um, and, and they've done that. Um, you know, so absolute credit to them for for, for doing that. Um, I think there's credit for the people who are in the room with them, uh, working with them. Um, you know, it that was hard graft, I have to say. Um, you know, it's, it 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 was literally a day job. Um, for the last 28 days um, and we're volunteers so it, it's been incredibly draining on, on, on the team who've, who've, who've gone in with this but actually the reality is it was made easy because FSG wanted to do something 
Mm. Um, and, and from that point of view, then that, 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 that starts the, the, the tenor of the conversation a lot different way than if you if you had loggerheads from day one. And I think that's that that was the the element of um, a, a positivity around it. You know, it meant that we could be and still remain um, optimistic that all of this is actually going to work. Do you think that they wanted to do something? Do you think it was a case of learning from another mistake? Because they have made mistakes. I mentioned them earlier with regards to £77 tickets, furloughing staff, you know, just different bits and pieces. But do you think this European Super League and this mistake they made accelerated them wanting to do something with fans? Yeah, uh, You know, I, th I think something more than a fan response stung... Um, all six clubs to be honest with you yeah um, so uh, you know it, it, clearly the outcry on that sunday night the monday that followed in terms of you know the what I, I don't think apart from, apart from you know perez and agnelli i don't think there's any supporting voices that that were you know, right behind them i think it felt as though that um sponsors that you know tv companies um who actually have they've got their own checkered history anyway but they were calling them out Fans were, MPs were calling them out. Um, there was there, there was just no solid voice for support in, in any way, shape, or form. You know, when you when you know when I'm getting invited to to Downing Street to have, to have a conversation about what's going on, clearly, you know, they, they, they're going to sit up and take notice, aren't they? And I think that, you know that, that that's that's what's happened um, as much as anything else. I think it shocked them, um, but I think the difference is is that FSG still want to play a major part in Liverpool Football Club, still want to play a major part in, in the city and still want to be a major player with it, within the football world per se. Um, unlike, you know, as you mentioned before, some of the other owners who, of the big six, this year just shrugged, shrugged their shoulders and gone into hiding and not speaking to fans. So, I mean, I think, again, you know, the, a credit to FSG for doing that. Um, but it is about season the moment and I think I think that's what what, what we as a as a union did was... was, was was recognised the backing that we'd have of, of, of fans um, in in opposition to what they did, and actually to shape it into something that's positive. Yeah, that's the key, isn't it? Because you know there was a lot of there was a lot of upset people on that Sunday and moving into that Monday, and we play Leeds, don't we, on Ellen Road on that Monday night, and you know you've even got supporters going, well, what does it matter? What does this matter tonight? Because we could be in this yeah. Super League. It's it's, and yeah. that's where I go back to with Premier League being devalued I suppose and you're, you're playing 28 yeah. training games really in preparation for a European Super League that that's sending all the money your way I just want to read quickly through um the rest of the, well yeah. more or less the rest of the statement just for the viewers that are listeners that are going to watch or view this um or listen a representative of the supporters board will meet annually with LFC's board of directors to consult on issues pertinent to fans Outside of this, if an agreed consultation matter is to be discussed at an LFC board meeting, the chair of the supporters board will be present. Again, you know, it's it's not just a lot of words, it's it's actually action there that you can see if something's happened. Um, supporters board representatives will have a term of two years and be chosen as a result of a democratic vote. As a recognised legal body, this determines that the supporters board led by SOS will have regular dialogue and input with LFC's local directorship, those based in the UK, where discussions, sorry, where decisions that directly affect us, the supporters are made. We will have influence and the power to say yes or no, in effect a blocking mechanism on issues that matter most to fans, such as saying no to the ESL or any further breakaway league. Unlike in Boston, where most talks around FSG's business and franchises, we will have a seat where football influence is strongest. Um, of course, the club uh, will come out and confirm this in a public declaration, which I've already, I think they've already done um, um, prior to us talking about this. The last thing I want to talk about, because I've kept you long enough, and you know, you've answered questions that you know Phil and P have asked about um, on our show ten days ago with regards to. What you see, where do you see it going? The, the role you have, you know, SOS and people joining it, and it's the, it's the elephant in the room at times when people say, "Well, they don't represent me." Okay, that's what we got. That's all I've, I heard a lot of. They don't represent me, and they don't because if you're not a member, SOS aren't representing you in an official manner. What do you say to people that aren't members of SOS or people that say they, that you don't represent them? Is it a case of they're correct? But with the supporters board 
and opening up to affiliates as you said and, and people that you want to engage with not only in liverpool the uk across the world that you will end up with a supporters board that could be a worldwide represent representation it was just you sos that went and looked for this because they were the largest body at the time yeah i think there's, there's a little bit to unpick there i think uh, listen everyone's got an absolute right to say that they don't represent me and and i fully accept that um mm -hmm. i suppose i want to you know demonstrate that we could be someone that wants to represent you as an individual whoever you is um i hope our track record you know demonstrates just what we do um but I think the important facet is, is that when people say Spirity Shankly don't represent me, we are actually the recognised su supporters trust with the club. Mm. Just like every other club has a supporters trust. And the role that we have is to represent supporter issues, which we do. And the other role that we have is to improve the community and that's the community of fans, but also the community around the football club. That's, they're the three sorts of responsibilities that we have as a supporters trust. Now, as spirit of, as spirit of Shankly, that's what we that's what we live and breathe for. Yeah. Um, the issue that maybe people have is is the how, um, because we do it as a union, um, so we do it on a democratic basis. So we do it as, with, with, with as a membership, um, but that doesn't mean to say people don't get the benefits of the union. And and I think, I think for me, you know, I've, I've, I've had forty years of being in and working with unions, um, and and I think. That responsibility that people have as a union is 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 many fold. Clearly, they are they articulate on behalf of their members, but actually they articulate on behalf of um, like a workforce, for example. And if you think if you think someone was going for a pay deal, you wouldn't all go in for, in in a, you know in a major organisation. You wouldn't be going in um, and speaking yourself to get your pay deal. The union collectively bargains and arranges that, but everyone gets the benefit. So if everyone gets the benefit of a 2% pay award, then everyone gets it, whether, whether, whether you are in the union or not. And I think that's that's all, all we are. We just want to represent the views as, of, of as many people as we can to get the best supporter engagement that we can. In terms of then where we are, I, I think I said early, early on, you know, we, I recognise, we recognise that, that we're not a complete outfit um, and, and we have gaps in our in our skill base in our knowledge base and, and 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 our representation we're happy to fill those um the supporters board will help us do that in a big way um but i think the other aspect is is that people maybe don't see what they get for 10 pound either um so it's not just you know the the volunteers who who will go in and back you in terms of any issues that that arise from a, from a football club it, you know we do the work to to develop a code of conduct about how supporters are dealt with by the club we do go in and talk about how uh, ticket prices should be set and how ticketing arrangements should be made about members about season ticket holders you know we do that that's but that, that's that's part of your membership um 60p of that membership goes towards the admin function just to support the membership um so you can get processed Everything else goes towards the union. Now, in good times, um, we're not campaigning and producing loads of leaflets and having loads of meetings and pr printing banners and stuff like that. Um, so that means a lot of that money goes towards the community. So the stuff I was talking about before about being in the food pantry today, you know, we are, we are fully funding for the next three years a food pantry in Liverpool 8 um, that will feed on a weekly basis up to 600 people we I mean, think yeah. about that in terms of you know that's what this union does um so it actually does have a huge impact not just on the engagement with the football club like we're told to as the supporters trust not just the, the fan community as we're supposed to in the supporters trust but also the local community as we're supporters trust and i think you know if someone could see that you know, nine pound forty of their ten pound subscription goes towards all of that. I think that's a hell of a contribution towards towards you know improving everything, not just in in the Liverpool um, FC uh, category, but also in the community category as well. Yeah, no, it's listen. I don't think anyone could knock the walk that 
not only ourselves but others are doing around um, the city of Liverpool and other cities across the UK uh, you know with regards to fuel banks and, and the fact that we have to have fuel banks is appalling to be honest with you yeah, but be, that's the nice that, one of our money to go into that yeah yeah you'd love yeah exactly you'd love to be giving your, your money to you know I don't know kids we're doing a thing at the moment for, for, for a child that needs uh, treatment in America you'd love to be giving something to that you know that sort of way um, but just to finish up, Joe. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how I see it, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm a big boy. I can take it. So, <laughs> what I see here is a union that was set up so many years ago. The Hicks and Gillette stuff. We've gone through it. It has, you know, as you said, short, medium, long term um, goals. And um, one of those to be on a board at Liverpool Football Club. But the biggest thing I see out of this is that. Yes, the club may look at the European Super League, and yes, it might be viable in a couple of years, and yes, they may look to expand the stadium, and they may look to do something around Kirby in the future, whatever it might be. But instead of it being a detached process, the the, the major thing for me in this, with Spirit of Shankly and the supporters board, and whoever ends up on it, is that there is somebody in the middle to take the supporters' view from not only Liverpool, but from further afield, and take it, look at it, bring it to the club, have dialogue, and we reduce or completely wipe out incidents like we've seen over the European Super League, over Forlow, over tickets, and wherever it might be. It's stopgap's the wrong wrong word. Middleman is probably the wrong word. But it's it's an avenue for fans that can't get to, you know, Fenway Sports Group and talk to them. It's an avenue for them to come and voice their opinion and have it be brought to Liverpool Football Club. Would I be right in saying that? Hundred percent. Yeah, that's that, that, that's it. You know, I'm, I'm going to quote you on that, Gav. Um, okay. It, it is. It, it it absolutely is. It's it's as I said before. It's a. I believe it's stronger than what we had before. Um, but I think more than anything else, it's a stronger influence with them, um, with with. with with greater independence, and I think we, we couldn't have asked for anything better. And, and you know, I'm looking forward to the next season when we've got this in place, um, and we would we will be making even greater progress with the football club um, on and off the pitch. Well, look, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, we got there in the end. We try we let people in on a secret. We spent about 25 minutes talking to each other. I was lip reading. Um, it was all going on, but we got there in the end. Uh, but listen, the next time we have Joe on, we will have Joe on again because he's been a brilliant guest. The next time you have him on, we will make sure everything works smoothly. Um, Joe, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks a million for your time. Uh, I look forward to it. It's been great. Really enjoy it. And anytime, uh, more than happy to uh, to come on the podcast. It, it was a great listen last week, and I won't listen to this one because I don't want to listen to myself again. <laughs> Yeah, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, we, we're going we're, we're gonna to get this out. We're going to have it out on our YouTube channel and we will have it out on our audio download as well. But that's been Joe Block from The Spirit of Shankly. I'm Gab from the LFC Day Troopers. Have a good one. Over and out.